a dense atmosphere, picturesque mountains, rivers, lakes, and gigantic seas. Even a brief glance is enough to convince you of the unique nature of our blue home planet. Although experts have been trying for some time to track down a cosmic twin of Earth, this exciting search has not yet uncovered any alien celestial body that appears as life-friendly as our terrestrial home. This does not mean, in the reverse conclusion, that no astronomical objects exist that indeed exhibit striking parallels to our Earth. If you're thinking in this sense of Venus, which was often called the sister of our blue homeland planet in the past, you're making a large error. In truth, it's not another planet that is the most Earth-like celestial body in the solar system, but a moon. To be more precise, it is Titan, the largest of all known Saturn satellites. What connects this exciting satellite with our home world and how both objects differ drastically from each other. We'll show you in today's video. Excited about the fascinating discoveries and unique spectacles in the universe? Then remember to subscribe to Simply Space for regular updates on these exciting topics. By giving us a thumbs up, you're showing us that we can keep you excited with the content of our posts. Titan. Why Titan was named after the most powerful deity in Greek mythology becomes clear to us when we take a closer look at the dimensions of this exciting celestial body. With a diameter of about 3,000 miles, Titan is not only Saturn's largest companion, but also the second largest moon in the solar system, second only to Jupiter's satellite Ganymede. From an atmospheric point of view, Titan is the only moon in the solar system to be surrounded by a dense gas envelope. It is precisely this dense, nitrogen-rich atmosphere that makes Titan the focus of attention whenever the question of Earth-like celestial bodies in the solar system arises. The two astronomical objects also have the widespread occurrence of liquid in common. However, the surface of Saturn's moon is not adorned by liquid water accumulations, but by lakes of liquid methane and ethane. Water ice can also be found on the outer surface of the icy moon. However, since the average surface temperature is a bone-chilling negative 300 degrees Fahrenheit, the water ice there has the consistency of silicate rock. If you want to encounter liquid water on Saturn's imposing moon, you'll probably have to literally look deeper, but more on that later. First, let's take a look at what Titan's face looks like in detail. The Face of Saturn's Moon One thing is certain, of all known bodies in the solar system, Titan has the most Earth-like surface forms. However, this also holds true. The corresponding surface is composed of completely different materials than the outside of our Earth. The fact that we now have a rather revealing picture of the face of Saturn's mighty moon is thanks to the Cassini-Huygens mission. As part of this ambitious NASA project, the two space probes bearing the mission's name ventured into the realms of Saturn. While Cassini examined the iconic ringed planet and its companions from a greater distance, Huygens landed on Titan's surface on January 14, 2005. In the process, the technical equipment succeeded in transmitting 72 minutes of data to Earth, greatly expanding our knowledge of the satellite. During the research mission, for example, scientists became aware that Titan's atmosphere is composed mainly of methane and nitrogen. Methane clouds were again identified about 12 miles above the surface, extending to the ground in a nebula-like pattern. Volcanic activity has also been detected, but the details of this activity differ significantly from their terrestrial counterparts. According to this. On Titan, it's not glowing hot lava that is thrown to the surface, but water ice and ammonia. Although the moon's atmosphere today is still five times as dense as the Earth's natural protective shell, the measurement data indicated that the satellite's gas shell must have been much denser in the past. In fact, it appears that the satellite has already completely lost its atmosphere once during its existence. Moreover, thanks to Huygens, we know that winds whip through Titan's atmosphere, reaching speeds of 100 feet per second. Basically, the landscape formations of this moon present themselves as extremely varied. The outer surface of the celestial body is adorned by mountains, valleys, and extensive dune landscapes. In reality, the surface of the moon is much darker than scientists had expected in the run-up to the exploration mission. The soil on which Huygens touched down was comparable to wet sand or clay in terms of its properties. In addition, researchers have discovered which natural processes underlie the formation of Titan's surface, a constant cycle of methane rains, rivers, and lakes. The Role of Methane Lakes 
The fact that methane can exist in liquid form at all on Titan is due to the bone-chillingly cold average temperatures that prevail there, whereas methane lakes were previously known only from the moon's polar regions. The Cassini-Huygens mission provided evidence that these special waters also exist in the satellite's tropical latitudes. Methane on Saturn's moon plays the same role as water on our blue home planet. It's responsible for the formation of Earth-like landscape formations on the frosty crust of the lunar surface. Indeed, Titan's liquid hydrocarbons are also subject to a fixed atmospheric cycle of raining, collecting, and flowing. In the process, the liquid methane erosively cuts into the icy surface of the satellite and forms mountainous landforms. The largest lake-like accumulations of methane are called mare. In terms of their dimensions, the corresponding formations can be compared to terrestrial inland seas. For example, the Kraken Mare has an area of about 150,000 square miles, making it significantly larger than the Caspian Sea. However, in addition to these massive lake types, we also find much smaller accumulations on Titan, and complex methane flow systems are also part of the natural face of the satellite. Although the Earth and Titan appear very similar at first glance, the probability of the existence of life on the lunar surface is put at almost zero. This is due to the fact that the satellite is outside the habitable zone, which means that its surface cannot support water in a permanently liquid form. The existence of life on Titan is not excluded categorically, however. We must only look beneath the surface of the celestial body. Life on Titan? The reason that Titan could elevate our understanding of the evolution of life in general to an entirely new level is primarily because experts suspect that our primordial Earth possessed an atmosphere similar to that of Saturn's moon. During its mission, the Cassini space probe discovered that hydrogen disappears near the bottom of Titan. The experts were also particularly surprised by the fact that acetylene, a colorless gas from the Alkyne series, which was suspected to be present there, could not be detected. This surprising circumstance coincided with the model astrobiologist Chris McKay had worked out. Within this theory, the acetylene serves methane-based living beings with an ideal energy supply. In other words, it's conceivable that organisms on the satellite consume acetylene in a similar way as terrestrial life forms do oxygen. To understand how life might evolve under the conditions of a titanic atmosphere, some researchers at the University of Arizona conducted an exciting experiment in 2010. First, the experts mixed together the main components of Titan's atmosphere, nitrogen, methane, and carbon monoxide. These substances were then exposed to strong radiation in an environment without water. The fascinating result? The amino acids, glycine, and alanine were formed in the course of the test series. These are no less than the basic building blocks of all terrestrial proteins. In the same breath, all five basic components of the nucleic acids, DNA, and RNA were also formed. In principle, it therefore seems possible that similar processes once took place on Earth. The basic building blocks of terrestrial life were not necessarily laid in the often cited primordial soup, but may have originated in the atmosphere, where they subsequently rained down on the surface. While some scientists believe that such preliminary stages of chemical evolution could have already taken place on Titan, other experts go even a bit further. Stephen Benner, for example, believes that life itself could also evolve in the satellite's liquid methane lakes. However, the disappearance of hydrogen near the ground and the lack of acetylene were not the only exciting circumstances uncovered by the Cassini-Huygens mission. For example, Cassini's radar measurements indicate that a gigantic ocean of liquid water lies dormant beneath the icy lunar surface. The fact that the water can exist there in liquid form despite the frosty conditions is due to the ammonia it contains. Ammonia acts as a kind of natural antifreeze that significantly lowers the freezing point of water. In order to find out what the conditions of Saturn's mysterious moon actually are, NASA plans to visit the satellite again in the foreseeable future. As part of the so-called Dragonfly mission, which is to be launched in 2027, a so-called quadrocopter will touch down on Titan's surface and provide us with important new insights into the satellite. Now it's your turn. What do you think about fascinating Titan? Drop us your thoughts, suggestions, and feedback on today's post in the comments. Are you in the mood for more exciting videos on the topic of outer space? Then take a look at the other contributions of our channel, which we have linked for you in the credits. Thanks for watching, take care, and we'll see you next time.